Hello friends, my name is Claire and I'm quirky, so please stick around. Hi friends, my name is Claire and this is my channel, Woodshed Theory. Here I make videos about what it's like to live as an adult on the autism spectrum and whatever else feels good to me. So if that sounds good to you, or if you're feeling particularly gracious today, and I hope that you are, please go ahead and click the subscribe button. Ring the bell. I almost forgot to mention that I put out videos three times a week. Hey guys, how are you? Myself, I've been having stress dreams, mostly about standardized testing and old work projects. Yay! Before we start our little chit chat today, I do want to say that I ordered this hat as a prop to wear for October for my videos. And now I can't seem to stop wearing it. This is the first time wearing it in a video, but I've been wearing it since I took it out of the mail. And I thought that maybe some of you might like this hat too, because number one, it is super witchin' and bitchin'. And number two, it was really affordable and it's comfortable and it is the witchy hat of my dreams. It makes me feel so good. What I'll do is I'll put a link down below on where you can find this hat on Amazon Prime. I think it's only about $13. I will put an affiliate link so I can make 10 cents or whatever if you buy through that link, but this hat, guys. I feel, I feel amazing. I feel amazing in this hat. I thought it would be funny today if we went over some stuff that I did when I was a young, undiagnosed autistic person that should have been a big hint to people that I was a bespectrumed being. If you're like me and was diagnosed later in your life, you've probably looked back at your young, undiagnosed autistic self and thought to yourself, how did no one know? How was it not obvious to everyone else? Listen, I know all of the talk about, well, they didn't know that girls had autism back then, and I'm just here to laugh at myself, so if you are looking for something more scientific or whatever, you can go and watch another video about signs that you may have autism. This is just my personal experience and things that I think are funny. So I got to thinking, I didn't always mask as well as I do today. The mask in ASD is something that you build and not something that you are automatically good at. I used to really let my freak flag fly when I was a child, so I thought I'd go over some examples that I thought were amusing and talk you through them. First, the way I dressed. I have always dressed fairly eclectically, <laughs> to put it mildly. I know that to be honest, recently with quarantine, I really only own pajamas now, and I'm trying to rectify that as I rebuild my wardrobe, but honestly, it's mostly just leggings and t-shirts right now, but it wasn't always that way. Since I was very young, I always expressed myself with clothing. I remember that in high school, uh, mostly everything that I wore was from the thrift store. I used to love going and getting any weird old t-shirt and then taking it in so that it was really tight and then wearing it with some dicky shorts and tube socks and converse that was one of my favorite looks another thing that got me dressed mostly through high school my lovely elderly neighbor had passed away and her family was clearing out all of her things out of her house and they invited me over to look through her closet and uh just shout out to Muriel from next door because she dressed me for most of high school i just went through her closet took everything that i thought was really cool and chopped it apart and wore it in different pieces man i was wearing some weird stuff i remember once from the salvation army i got a plaid skirt with pleats like something 80s really long cut it super short and then put a bunch of tulle underneath it so that it like flipped out and i wore it to school once for dress down day i'd also like spray paint my clothing i was like really out there 
and something that my mother always said going anywhere with me as I got older was that I was always overdressed or dressed like I was going somewhere and everyone else felt really awkward. I also was not very good at knowing what was appropriate for a setting. I loved to wear like fishnets and black and red nail polish to church. I just didn't read the cultural appropriateness of what I was wearing ever. I just wore what felt good to me and I'm trying to get back to that point in my life because I know that over the years I really squashed my self-expression trying to fit in and to me that was a big hey I'm I may not be neurotypical like the way I used to dress but over the years I kind of learned to hide it and dress more appropriately. So that was definitely one of the big red flags to me, uh, as well as how I wore my makeup. So growing up, I always wore a ton of makeup, especially during my late teens, early 20s. I know that it was a popular time to wear a lot of makeup, but I started very young and was very creative with it. So some of my nicknames were like clown. I got made fun of fairly often for the way that I look to people. I was just all up in your face with my look and I loved it and I I didn't realize that it I didn't realize that it wasn't such a normal thing for people to do or be more subdued to fit in. So that was definitely for me. I look back and I think, whoa, that's an autistic kid. Another thing that to me looking back was a huge red flag is that I was only able to succeed in things that I could practice and process on my own time. And if I didn't have that time to practice and process beforehand, I would utterly fail. I did come up with an example. One year I was trying out for regional choir. We had to learn one song for the tryout and you would go in and get adjudicated by the judges and they would rank you and you'd see if you got into regional choir. Well, when it was just one song, I ranked number two out of however many girls. I did awesome, knocked it out of the park. So obviously when it got around to trying out for state choir, I did just as well, right? Oh no. See, state choir required you to learn all of the music for the state choir practice. And that was at least maybe six, eight songs. I'm not really sure right now. And you had to be ready to start from any point in that song, in any of the songs and start singing from that point, a cappella. And it just so happened that they picked a song where there was one spot in the song where I thought to myself, well, I hope they don't pick that spot because I always really struggle with that spot. And they picked that spot in the one song and I just completely went blank in the audition and left in tears because if I have the time to and know what's going to be coming up then I'm great. I can perform. I could be number two out of 50 but if you're just throwing something at me and saying okay well you learned all of this material here's this one little piece I just don't I don't do well not knowing ahead of time. And I know a lot of people think that, you know, okay, well, prepare more. But this goes beyond that. For me, it's like a, just a slower processing and an inability to be flexible in the spur of a moment, in the spur of the moment, to me is a, a big red flag that I was autistic early on. You know, that was really hard for me because I always wanted to do well on things. And if I knew exactly what was going to be tested, I would be fine. But if it was a toss-up, done. Completely done. Inflexibility in general. Uh, another thing that happened to me in college 
I was uh, trying out for a role in Your Good Man Charlie Brown, and I would always watch the original actress and try and emulate that actress as much as possible. So I sang in like a really cartoony, weird voice. And I remember that I practiced it that way and I worked so hard on my character development and then I got to the audition and the sweet director came up to me and she said, can you maybe just do it in your normal voice? And I couldn't. I could not do the audition in my normal voice. I did not get the part, probably because of that, because they weren't looking for a complete carbon copy of what the original actress did, which I thought maybe obviously is what they wanted. <laughs> so yeah, definitely not great at being flexible, especially in a high pressure situation. Another thing that I thought of is that as a child, and now as an adult too, I spend an inordinate amount of time by myself. And as a child, I spent most of my time playing by myself. I really liked playing on my own uh, because I didn't have to read social situations. I did want to play with other children, but I spent most of my time playing with dolls and setting them up and setting up different situations I thought they could be in. And I spent a lot of time by myself pretending situations that I could be in with other people. But when I came to actually play with other children, I was very socially awkward. And let's just say, I don't think the practice helped. It didn't help. What I really guess I'm saying is that I did not fit in, which I know is not abnormal for autistic people, but a lot of it was by choice, I'd say. Like I was always just striving to be my coolest, most authentic self for the longest time because I thought that, you know, that was cool and I didn't care what other people thought. But that's really interesting because it brings me into my next point. When I did start masking, I would normally choose a group of people to emulate and then just copy everything that they did in hopes that I would fit in with that group or that person. ASD people are really good actors because they're able to do this. They're able to look at someone and then just carbon copy themselves into another form of that person. Um, I think at some point I realized that I was not doing well just trying to be myself. And if I was going to succeed, I was going to have to suppress everything that made me me and take on uh, different personas and different personalities that were more socially acceptable. The thought that I needed to do this definitely now is a huge red flag to me. Yes, I was definitely on the spectrum trying to mirror and mask myself into different situations instead of just going in as myself and hoping that other people like what they see. Perhaps I learned early on that maybe people don't like weird or especially when you're younger and you're different, kids don't like that. So eventually just becoming a copy of everyone else, you can kind of fit in so much better. It's really sad to think about that now, but so it happened, so here I am. The last thing I had to talk about today was my inability to keep secrets or keep things private. And this really had a bad effect on me having friends because when you do have friends, there is that expectation that they can come to you in confidence and I never felt like I could have strong relationships because I could never keep anything a secret. Like a secret to me felt so awful because I had such anxiety about what is okay to tell to people, what is just straight up facts, 
And then what is what my parents would call family business? You know, something that you don't go around sharing with other people. To an autistic person, all information is just factual. It's either, it's black or white thinking, right? Factual or non-factual. So why does it matter if you share the information around? But as an adult or learning as a person as I grew up, I realized that that isn't how people function. And now that I'm on anxiety medication and have gotten some help, I'm able to have deeper relationships where people can confide in me and I don't feel like I'm going to explode. But as a child, that was definitely a big red flag for me that looking back that I was on the spectrum, my inability to keep things private, to keep secrets, and that feeling of just such stress. If anyone shared anything that was meant to be kept private, I felt like I was going to explode. Friends, I don't know if this was a silly video or not, but I just thought it would be fun to talk about what I look back on now and think, well, that, there's that, there's that. Um, and, and I wanted to kind of go over some things that maybe aren't on your usual, like, you may be autistic if list. So I would love to hear if you have some things that you think about, about your childhood, where you think, how could nobody have noticed that I was on the spectrum? Is there anything in particular to you that you think about that really, you know, gets your thoughts ticking? That is it for me today. Again, I'll link the link to this hat down below because I know that everyone's gonna see it and wanna get one because I wanna get one in every color now. And I hope that you have a wonderful Wednesday, and I will see you on Friday. Bye!